Hello everyone, glad to see you on our channel. In this new video, I'll show you how ASIC What's Miner works with our new firmware. You will see the capabilities of the device overclocking, and I will share with you some insights. We will go through the whole process from installation to overclocking. Let's get started. First, you need to go to our website, bixbit.io, then go to the Firmware tab. On this page, you can find a brief information on the firmware. By the way, subscribe to our technical support channel on Telegram. Here you can find firmwares, which are grouped by ASIC manufacturers, Bitmain and What's Miner. This video is about the What's Miner firmware, and we'll review several firmwares for ASICs of the 20th, 30th, and 50th series. It means that if you have an M20S ASIC model, then you download the firmware for the 20th series. If you have an ASIC M31S, then you download the firmware for the 30th series, respectively. Here this is another firmware for power supplies, but I'll come back to this part a bit later when we talk about the immersion of ASICs in liquid. So, click more details on the firmware you need. You'll be redirected to a specific page. Don't forget to read the installation instructions, which you can find here. Our guide is very detailed, so all you need is just to follow the instructions. It contains active links to everything you need to upgrade your ASIC. They are highlighted in blue. You can also download the additional, even more detailed installation guide below. Well, let's go through the instructions to be sure you will not miss anything. As an example, I'll install the firmware for ASIC M50. First, launch the device on air cooling and go through all the steps according to the instructions. The first thing we need to do is download the What's Miner tool utility. I'll use it in this video, but I recommend studying it by yourself as well, as it will help in working with ASICs. You can download the current version by clicking the link. After downloading, unpack the archive and run it. Next, you'll need to find the ASIC on the network. This can be done by any IP scanner or What's Miner tool. If you already know the address of your device, then you just need to add the network scan range of the utility. Then press the Start button to find your ASIC. Next, on the site, download the necessary firmware. In our case, it is the firmware for the 50th ASIC series. After downloading, go to What's Miner tool, select your device, and click Upgrade. Now we just need to wait until the installation is done. Here in the status column, you'll be able to see once the ASIC is upgraded. If the ASIC is not flashed through What's Miner tool, you'll need to flash it using an SD card. You can see how to do this in the instruction. After the installation of the firmware via an SD card, you will go to the What's Miner tool and upgrade it with our firmware, as was shown earlier. Now I want to dwell on the firmware for the ASIC power supply. It is necessary if you want to immerse your devices. Firmware for the power supply is only needed to disable the fan check. To do this, in the web interface of an already flashed ASIC, go to the PSU Firmware tab. Click Upgrade and Confirm. Then you'll need to wait. Also, when immersing, it will be necessary to remove the fans from the ASIC device as well. If after the firmware installation you receive an error, then it is recommended to use a fan emulator. Well, the firmware is installed and the ASIC is ready to go. Now I'd like to talk about the possible options for overclocking. Option 1. When you have an ASIC with three hash boards and an original power supply, you can cool it both in air and in liquid. In this option, 
you can get up to 7 to 15 percent performance increase by increasing the power supply consumption limit to 3900 watts. But you need to understand that everything depends on the ASIC model itself. Option 2 is an option for 1 plus 1 equals 3, namely when you use ASICs with two hash boards and an original power supply to overclock them. In this case, it works like we get 3 out of 2 ASICs and overclock each one to almost stock values. This option works well with an immersion cooling system. At the same time, you also save on miners themselves. Well, the third option is the most interesting one. When you use an additional power supply, here you can get a performance increase of 50%. It can be used both in air cooling and in liquid. How to do this, we will consider further. To begin with, let's analyze what we need. A set of wires for the required section with lugs, a bus for connecting the positive terminals, a screw for connection, and an additional power supply unit. And of course, you'll need to download the firmware for the ASIC to work with an additional power supply from our website and install it on your ASIC. As shown earlier, important, first install the needed firmware on the device and then start connecting it to the ASIC. Now let's take a closer look at the power supply. The first thing you need to pay attention to is the voltage of the standard unit. Some devices run on a 12-volt power supply, while other models work on a 14-volt power supply. This is easy to determine by looking at the block itself. There's always a sticker with technical parameters. We need the value with a large number of amperes here. After determining the required voltage, we can proceed to the selection of an additional power supply. We need a power supply with power from 2 kilowatts. Also, it should be able to connect individual wires, for example, like this one. Other selection criteria such as dimensions, manufacturer, etc. are not as important. First, remove the control board and disconnect all the wires. Next, unscrew the positive bus and one of the screws on the zero bus, depending on the side of the connection of the additional unit. We need to either cut the positive bus by removing unnecessary contacts or use a custom one as shown in the video. We leave the negative tire as is. Next, we connect wires to an additional power supply unit. We connect the hash board with an additional unit. Pay attention to the connection of the negative contact. If the length of the standard screw is not enough, then for a better connection, you need to use a longer one. When connecting, it's important to keep in mind the polarity and prevent contact closure. Also, consider the location of the power supply for a convenient connection of the power cable. When the additional power supply is connected, we can proceed to overclock. We'll do this in liquid and see what maximum hash rate we can get. We'll use different models of the 20th, 30th, and 50th series. I'm turning the ASICs on and proceeding to their configuration. Now I'll show the setting on the ASIC M50. To overclock the device, we go to the Overclock tab, and here we can choose either ready-made profiles or enter the settings manually. Profiles for different models will be gradually added with firmware updates. I'll show you how to enter the settings manually. 
The main parameters for overclocking are the frequency, voltage, and power limits of the power supply. We'll change only these parameters. The other values are specified by default and can be left as is. To determine the required values, we need to focus on the stock values of the miner, its operating frequency, voltage, and consumption. Next, change the frequency in the settings. Change the values of the minimum and maximum voltages. In these values, we make small deviations so that the ASIC, when selecting parameters, has the opportunity to select values from the range. It is not recommended to take a large range, since in this case, it will take lots of time for an ASIC to select the necessary values. This doesn't work very well for the miners of the 20 series, since their control board is older and not as productive as new models. Well, then we enter power limit and power max values for the original power supply. Here we set the limit of 3900 watts, and for the maximum, we take 200 watts more, i.e. 4100 watts. These are standard values that can get from an original power supply. When the settings are done, click Apply and wait until the ASIC enters the operating mode. Well, the devices have reached their maximum performance, let's have a look at the parameters. M50 has 173 terahash per second, consumption 6046 watts. M30S Plus has 152 terahash per second, consumption from the outlet to two power supplies 6209 watts. M20S is 103 terahash per second, power consumption 6382 watts. The result is M50 in stock has to 120 terahash per second and we overclocked it up to 173 terahash per second. Performance increased by 44%. As for the M30S Plus in stock, it has 100 terahash per second. We overclocked it to 152 terahash per second, increased by 52%. M20S is stock at 68 terahash per second. We managed to overclock it up to 103 IE performance increase by plus 51%. As you can see, we got a significant performance boost for all of the miners. I also want to draw your attention to the fact that soon our AMS monitoring system will support What's Miner ASICs as well, which will make working with devices even more convenient. You can make here various custom settings, receive notifications about devices' work and changes, easily manage a large number of miners, see statistics on them, and many other useful functions. All this will be available soon. As you can see, with the help of our firmware, we were able to get a significant performance boost on what's minor ASICs by more than 50%. You can do the same with your devices to get additional profit. You just need to download and install the firmware from our website and follow the instructions in the video. Also on the site, you can find instructions and many useful links. If you have some difficulties, then you can always contact us via our official channels on Telegram at Bixbit underscore dev. I'll leave the links in the description. Well, that's it for today. You can find all the useful information below in the description. Leave your comments under the video and subscribe. See you soon.